Rabies, the single disease that Dr. Warren is the most afraid of. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. I'm Dr. Tom Warren. Dr. Tom Warren, infectious disease. He is facing his demons today, the single disease he's most afraid of. Thanks for coming, Tom, as usual. We're going to talk all about rabies, what it is, who gets it, how to avoid it, and, and unfortunately, ways or ways to not treat it, unfortunately. So let's start at the beginning. What is rabies? So rabies is a viral infection okay. um, that is um, acquired from usually bites from animals. Right. Now humanity has been afraid of rabies for thousands of years. Why is everyone so afraid of rabies? Well, it's because once someone develops symptoms, there's really no treatment, so it's completely incurable. Uh, and like incurable, you live with a disability or you die? Or you die. Yeah, 100% mortality. Okay, so that's a good reason for civilization to fear rabies for the last 4,000 years. Right, so rabies is what's called a zoonotic disease, right? So it comes from animals. In North America, would you say it's mostly like things like raccoons, skunks, and, and dogs? Or not even dogs really no, anymore? No, like dogs really haven't been a problem for a few decades in North America. Um, most of the bites or the, most of the case of rabies in probably the last 40 or 50 years in North America are from bats. Right. Other animals can uh, transmit it, like raccoons. But uh, yeah, in Canada and the U.S., it's we, bats. We have a lot of bunnies in our neighborhood. Can you have a <laughs> rabid rabbit? Uh, it's theoretically possible any mammal can have it, but no, really, there's a small number. Uh, yeah, uh, bats. And that would be one. Foxes. I feel rascally like not, not bunnies. That would be a rascal. Squirrels or chipmunks. So if your kid is feeding chipmunks peanuts, it's not a concern. I was going to say it would be a rascally rabid rabbit if you have a. <laughs> I feel like that bunny in Monty Python was maybe had that had, had, that had a mean streak in that, it a mile yeah, wide. Yeah. Uh, okay, so mostly around here, bats, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is why people kind of freak out when they see bats. Yeah, and they should. Uh, yeah. There you go. Okay, so so someone has to be bit, obviously. So actually, more, you don't have to be bit. Isn't it? Can't just the saliva get in an open wound or? It can, or, but yeah, most are transmitted by by bites. So so you have a bite. And then, obviously, if you know it's a, an animal that is exposed or has a high risk of rabies, then you'd go see your doctor. Um, what would your doctor do? So there's two main things. There's immunoglobulin yep. and there's vaccination. So if a bite is caught early enough, there's definitely things that can be done. Okay, okay. and that's key. What's that early enough period? Is that thing where I got bit and I'll get to the eMERGE later this week? Or is it like, what's your time frame where you got to start that immunoglobulin or vaccination or whatever? Yeah, well, it's within a few days. Um, it, it's not something that, you know, has to be done right away, like within an hour. But um, it is important that if there is an exposure to yeah. go and seek medical attention pretty soon. And this is not because people get symptoms right away, because it can lie dormant for quite some time, like even yeah, up to like a year, I years, think. years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so then all of a sudden, if you were to get symptoms from rabies, how would it start? So it usually starts with some sort of uh, tingling or abnormal sensation in the area of the bite and then uh, manifests with neurological and psychiatric symptoms right. over time. Like what? Well, just abnormal behavior. Okay. And then there's some classic symptoms, you know, just like fear of water and things like that. Right, so let's talk a little about that. So, so the fear of water after rabies is called hydrophobia. That's probably the most famous symptom, I would say, or the most, um, you know, you've heard about it the most in folklore or TV or movies, just that hydrophobia. And do we know why people are afraid of water? Yeah, I think we do. I don't specifically. <laughs> <laughs> that means Brad knows. Yeah, yeah you probably looked it up. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I, so I did look it up. So it's the sensation. So your throat actually goes into a spasm because of the nervous system dysfunction, because of the rabies, so that it, it's physically like a swallowing kind of issue. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you're worried that you're going to drown or that you're going to choke. But Yeah, no, it's actually a neurologic symptom, yeah. not a psychiatric symptom. I looked it up too. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's your wor it just you have this autonomic response of yeah. choking. And so even when you see water get near water, it's, that can trigger it. Right, and with the aggression, this is kind of classically a, a rabid dog. Mm -hmm. And in the 1957 Disney classic, Old Yeller, Ooh. the boy's dog fights a wolf to keep it away from the sheep. And, and the boy, thankfully, is able to shoot the wolf at first. And Old Yeller is bit and kind of limps away. And then slowly they noticed that Old Yeller started changing and having aggressive behavior. And they had him in a, in a pen, which I think nowadays if a dog is exposed to an animal that might have rabies, often they'll, um, they'll keep it contained for a little while, or sometimes depending on the severity of the disease or if they're a vaccine, sometimes they'll euthanize it right away. Yeah, 
right now for, for small animals, if we can monitor them for two weeks and they don't develop a disease, then right. we know that they don't have rabies. And so for a lot of small animal bites, especially dogs, uh, that's what's done. And most dogs in North America, it's recommended that they are vaccinated, is that correct? That's how we've essentially that's right. that's eliminated how it's the been disease. Eliminated. Yeah. But in many other areas of the world, um, especially parts of Asia and Africa, right. um, really 99% of rabies in those places stray are from, dogs. from stray dogs. Yeah. Okay, so you, get, you can get rabies if you're bitten by an infected animal. Uh, and then if left untreated, it's 100% fatal. Mm -hmm. If you treat it early enough, you can get the immunoglobulin or a vaccine, basically. Often together, yeah. Yeah, and that can help. Uh, that will prevent, that is almost 100% successful in preventing yes. the development of the disease. What about prophylactic vaccination? Like, can humans get a vaccine? Uh, and, and should they get a vaccine? Or who should get a vaccine? For rabies before they've even been bit or in case they get bit? Yeah, so certainly people who are going to be at high risk. And so in North America, it's often uh, people who work with animals, so veterinarians and, and other people. Um, even travelers can potentially get it. Um, get the vaccine. Get the vaccine if they're traveling to areas where there are a lot of stray dogs. So in 2010, I went to Haiti after the earthquake, and they recommended that I got yeah. the rabies vaccine because of bats it? and stray dogs. So I did, yeah. I didn't so get rabies, I got the so vaccine. So you're like, pro, you're like for life prevented? Yeah. Okay. No, the vaccine uh, does require boosters. Oh, okay. So, well, for um, 10 or something, 10 years? Yeah, it, it depends. We can do uh, serologic tests to see uh, right. whether the antibodies are detectable, but it isn't life long. Oh, okay. Actually. Brad, you better check that. I'm, I haven't been back, so, yeah. Um, uh, all right, but well, where you live, there's a lot of animals. There, there are a lot of animals. <laughs> I'm not handling them, but yeah, certainly there are skunks and raccoons where I am for sure. Okay, so what can someone do then? Let's say if you don't have the vaccine, what are some things to, like, what are some common sense things you would recommend to avoid getting rabies? Yeah, just not handling wild animals like raccoons and, and skunks, and especially, uh, you know, bats. So if some people have issues with bats in their home, you know, calling some sort of pest control and making sure that you know, attics and crawl spaces are fixed and okay. no kind of uh, ability for the bats to get into the house. What I was going to say is when I was in university, interesting bat story. So I lived in, uh, in, in, I went to Queen's University in Kingston. And there's some houses that are not of the highest quality standard there. So I lived in this house and I um, had a, a bathroom in the, in the basement that was like a low ceiling, unfinished basement. And one morning I was going, I wear, I wear contact lenses, I was going down to the shower. Mm -hmm. And I get down and I'm looking at it, I'm like, there's something in the, in the bathtub. It looks like this big piece of dirt. And then I was like, wait a second, there's a bat in the tub. So that... <laughs> So, is that when you got rabies? No, so I, so I did. So what I did though is, thankfully I had an empty beer pitcher and a plate. So I put the beer pitcher on top of the bat, yeah. pulled it up the side of the bathtub, and then put the plate on top. But one of the wings was still outside. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like I'm in like a towel because I'm going to have a shower. Mm -hmm. So I have this now, one bat wing flying, and mm -hmm. then I took it out to the front step and then launched it out. But I didn't really realize what risk I was exposing myself to. At that and from time. that day on, were you known as Batman? <laughs> no. And Queens? No, that's mocked by everybody in my house. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. No doubt. So that's something you wouldn't recommend doing. No. no like some people do have to deal with the bats, but ideally you want to do it in a controlled way. Yeah. There's no way we were paying for a pest control. Yeah, no. <laughs> times, are, times are tough. Maybe, school, go get, maybe go get the vaccine first and That's go right. back and deal with that bat in the tub. That's a great summary. So now you know rabies is a very serious disease. Thankfully in North America, it's not very common, but in other parts of the world it is very common. So be careful with the wild animals that you interact with or don't interact with them at all. If you have a dog, please get it vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just be careful if you do get bit, see your doctor quickly so that you can receive appropriate treatment. And you had mentioned there was not that long ago a fatality in Ontario. Yeah, thankfully in North America, uh, fatalities are rare. In Canada, it's on average less than one per year. Okay. But it does occur. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's, that's the key. If you do get bit or you do think you've been exposed, then go to the eMERGE right away. Now, you know, uh, if, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, check out our little other long form content over on YouTube. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And thanks to Dr. Warren for joining us.